What is up, my beautiful people? I am so excited to kind of officially start the new season. I guess technically I did have an intro episode, but this would be the first official interview episode in what could be known as season three or volume three or chapter three of Connected in the Den. And I'm very excited that we're kicking it off with one of my dear friends, Abigail, also known as Energy Light Healing. She is honestly phenomenal. Like I, I, I feel like we have a serious love fest going on for each other, like definite soul connections, soul ties. And I'm so happy that we've reconnected on this earth in this lifetime. She is an energy healer as well as let me actually look at my notes because I know I'm going to fuck this up, but she's a certified clinical trauma professional and a certified transpersonal psychologist and hypnotherapist. Like she's crazy talented. I'm telling you like, and her energy is just, she's so warm and welcoming and loving and inviting all the things that you would want in a therapist and a healer, just in a friend or in a person. This conversation is super layered. We talk about divine masculine energy, divine feminine energy. We talk about nurturing the gifts that are in our children, um, any psychic gifts or spiritual gifts and abilities, which I really love. And I know I get a lot of um, questions about that. It's just, it's so good. Lots of laughs. Uh, You can really feel my energy (laughs) in it, like my excitement. So I really hope that you enjoy it just as much as I did. So let's get into this conversation with Abigail, Energy Light Healing here on Connected in the Den. Hi. Hi. (laughs) How are you doing? I am doing amazing. Thank you so much. Good. I'm so happy that we're sitting down like this. This has been in my mind, in my awareness for some time. So it's, it's been like just over a year that I've recorded (laughs) recorded any interviews or anything and so I've been just sort of like subtly brainstorming all this time Mm -hmm. I guess waiting for the right kind of moment right to get this going and I just we connected somehow on socials I don't even remember how but I've just been like in awe of of you and your content and what you share and I think it's very important uh especially for the current situation right now. Um, Mm -hmm. You're a soul coach and energy healer. And um, so I just am very drawn to your light. And just (laughs) also just um, the, I guess, I don't know, like your, your, your mission, or maybe you can properly define it, but integrating the physical with the spiritual self. And that I think is really important on the spiritual, um, not just the spiritual journey, but our life journey. So um, I'll let you kind of elaborate more in what you do, but I'm very curious as to how you got here, how you, how your journey led you to this point of being a mentor, sharing your, obviously your personal experiences um, and just holding space for others to understand how important that, that integration actually is. Thank you so much. Honestly, I've been a fan of yours for quite some time. I don't remember how we connected, but I just remember seeing your face and being like, everything she's saying, yes, yes, yes. Like I couldn't stop like liking everything and commenting. (laughs) And I was like, oh my gosh. Um, And it just felt like I had found like a kin, you know, and someone even virtually. So I'm excited to be here. Um, But yeah, you know, I think you understand, Chrissy. I know you understand. Uh, When I began on this spiritual path and journey, it happened after uh, such a tumultuous time of my life. You know what I mean? I had been going and navigating through suicidal attempts, uh, deep darkness and depression, like all of these things. And, And it wasn't a brand new thing. Like the theme of that had carried throughout most of my life. Right. And it was always different things that were stuck in my mind, you know, and I couldn't quite express them out. And so I was like, yeah, I'm done. Nobody gets me. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And, uh, you know, in 2020, early 2020, before the pandemic hit, like all that stuff, there was this spark that occurred through conversations with, you know, people that entered in through my life. And that began this romance with spirituality 
that was obsessive. I was like consuming anything that I could, any Reiki session, any channeled message, yes. any like quantum healing thing. I was like, I'm there. Mm -hmm. Women's circle, I'm there. Mm -hmm. Virtual get phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> so it felt like I went on this like super highway of awakening and healing. And it was like, this is amazing. I bought every crystal you can find, every piece of jewelry. I was like, I'm on the spiritual bandwagon and it feels good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what happens in that, right? Uh -huh. The bubble burst and it's just like, okay, good. You got the introduction. Are you ready to do the work? And I was like, wait, what do you mean? I did it. Like it, it happened. I'm done. Yeah. Like I'm here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so then entered in, you know, the spaces of facing the shadow. And in those spaces, it was so uncomfortable. It was just like navigating this rebirth of self. And I was like, oh my God, all this stuff has been there. I can't believe it. And um, it awoke something inside of me where I was coming into realizations of self, as I think most healers do, and most mm -hmm. like people that enter into this ministry of service, you know? um where i was like if i'm coming into these awarenesses other people should absolutely <laughs> join me you know like i i know that there's other people navigating through this i want to save the world and then entered in the <laughs> hero era right i was like i'm yes. here to save the world <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and it was beautiful to witness you know what i mean yeah. because it was coming from such a sincere space and then the cycles of that just continued and continued. But um, my practice, it started off, you know, with uh, light language and kind of entering in through the energetics of healing through a cellular level, right? Understanding what that even meant, the meridians of the body and of the spiritual self and the way that they unify as one. Um, and then it evolved deeper into feminine womb work and understanding the feminine essence and the energy of that and how it plays into what I was already doing. It was like a chain reaction of that. Yeah. I am currently and have been for, for a little bit is um, I've come to realize that through our divine energetic spiritual self, we can assist so much in a practical way. Uh, what is happening in our physical reality, which if we're being honest, I'm not meant to externally go anywhere ever. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yes, I can I connect know. to the divine. <laughs> I can connect to the divine. I can be a divine being. I can have that understanding and that awareness, but I'm not meant to live in that space because otherwise, what are we doing here? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so that's that a is... basis of my work. Yeah. <laughs> No, I love that because it's, this is, it's something very similar that I teach with, you know, with psychic development and, and mediumship development is that we're spiritual beings having a human yeah. experience, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just, I'm curious as to, like, <clears throat> maybe, like, I don't want to like cross boundaries, but like, what no, would you good. say it was like the catalyst moment that shifted you into this the embodiment of your your true divine essence like um mm. is is there something that stands out because i i feel too like if i look back to some of you know because it's just interesting and you and i have spoken often but just like hearing it even just right now i'm like i relate so hardcore to like it's actually kind of crazy like how similar our paths are but if i look <laughs> back to before you know, the, the true, the awakening or however you want to call it. I feel like mm. there was always this sort of subtle inner knowing that I wasn't exactly where I was meant to be or where I was supposed to be, or that I was sort of living a false kind of identity or a false kind of reality. And then I feel like as I stepped into this version of myself my my divine essence it was like yes this is what I was I could always you know it's it is a remembering right like of our gifts and everything so do you feel that there was something similar in that sort of quiet calling before the full activation happened for you oh my god yeah I I can resonate with everything that you're saying you know because when I was the earliest memory that I have 
uh, cognitively is when I was around four years old, okay. being in Guatemala in my grandparents' home, which is part of my my story, right? I grew up, you know, partially with my grandparents, but um, being in that house, and mind you, this was in Guatemala, and the house that they owned had been, you know, passed down for generations, okay. and so it was a lot of energy in yeah. that space. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. We're talking about energetic portal after portal after portal, and I didn't know I was being raised in that. Right, <laughs> so right. I'm there. I'm there in that space, and I'm there with, um, pretty much surrounded by ancestral energy, and I started hearing things. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't comprehend what it was because I was four, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. so I just remember like hearing my name being called and nobody was around. I remember like seeing certain things and I was like, is that real? Like, I just didn't know. Yeah. I had no idea. And so there was these little like hints and sparks and like things. And um, there would be often times where I was predicting things that were going to happen, especially when it came to people's intentions, mm -hmm. you know, and I remember throughout my life, like in childhood, telling friends like, hey, you know, just be cautious. This person feels like they have like a different intent and then be like, no, they're great. And, <laughs> and then like a couple of weeks later, they were like, oh, my God. And I was like, how did that happen? Yeah. How did I, yeah. how did that, you know what I mean, come into my awareness? Um, and it just kept translating in my life. I want to say that that spark, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. came uh, in early 2020, like I said, from a space of desperation. Yeah. But I think it had been brewing there for quite some time. So all right? it needed yeah. was just a very small ignition mm -hmm. to make the numbers become a flame, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, did you get a chance to speak to your grandmother about your gifts, your abilities? So the interesting part about it is that I couldn't. Oh, <laughs> like, I couldn't. And, and, and the thing is, it's such a weird thing in my family that I know I've been shifting, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm the one to come and break all that and like, shift. I think it's going to come very gradually. Yes. I think we're all taking our part yes, in that. Yeah. But, um, I grew up, my, my mother and father are Christian, uh -huh. like deeply religious Christian, you know, and, and some of like the salt of the earth type people, mm -hmm. so loving, so caring, very much like committed to service. Yeah. They are, like, I am of a servant heart mm -hmm. <laughs> that has been them for forever, my whole life. Uh, but my grandparents uh, navigating very similar constructs of paradigm of religion, right? Mm -hmm. Catholic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so my grandmother though, uh, and a lot of women in our family, super psychic. Hey. <laughs> very psychic. Hey. Very, very psychic. So when I did express it, it would be like, oh, you know, that's God revealing, you know, to you, the Holy Spirit. And it was always under, like, the language of religion. religion. Yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, yeah. it's the same thing. Yeah. Different, different, uh, different label, same ingredient. Yeah. <laughs> And, and okay, you also have a son. Do you, does he has, has he expressed any type of, does, does he? He's more powerful than me, I feel, you know what I mean? I feel that my son, uh, and it, I, I feel like right now in the age that he's in, it's almost, mm -hmm. it's, it's very purposeful. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like it's muted itself a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But when my son was extremely young, I'm talking about like two years old, maybe even younger, my son saw things mm -hmm. very intensely like i mean and he would point at it and talk to it and like communicate with it and that's children yeah you know i mean they're yes. so open they're yeah. beautiful pure vessels mm -hmm. they they don't see a separation the way that we create it mm -hmm. in the mind in order to survive this reality right yes but um my son was doing that and one of my favorite stories about that is when we were at his um i want to say he was maybe in kindergarten and i was there with his father and um he went up to his teacher and he was like hi baby like to her belly and my just she's like stick thin and i'm here mortified <laughs> i'm just like oh i'm sorry yeah, i don't know what the hell is going yeah. on and um she started crying she got very teary and i was like i'm sorry if he offended mm -hmm. you i was like he's you know four like i don't know and so she was like no we haven't told anyone like i'm seven weeks old. oh my gosh i just got chills <laughs> just like what happened it was this weird thing and i was <sighs> just like oh my god and so my son has always had this like inkling very connected to the earth mm -hmm. like i said right now he's 12 so his right. his 
thoughts are navigating more of an earthly existence, which I think is great, mm -hmm. you know, he's learning himself in that mm -hmm. way. So, okay, question then, because I get asked this a lot. I don't have children. Uh, I have a yeah. lot of nieces and nephews. And so I try to, you know, guide them as best as I know how <laughs> as an auntie. But how do yeah. you nurture then the gifts and the abilities in your son? Um, I let my son be himself. Mm. You know what I mean? And yeah. I don't push an agenda because I know, I remember what that felt like as a child. Yeah. Where my parents were like, you have to go to church and this is exactly how you do it. And this is the, the very rigid masculine. Mm -hmm. So rigid masculine. With my son, I invite him into nature. Yeah. You know, we hang out. And it's funny because most of his family members uh, love to spoil him. Mm -hmm. You know, they take mm -hmm. him on these amazing trips and they, they buy him all these things and they have him in, involved in, in the stuff that's very logical and very human, which I think is great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For me, I've made it almost my intention with my relationship with my son to bring his heart back to simpler things. Yes. You know what I mean? Where I, I, we were in Florida just a couple weeks ago and I took him to a lot of conservatories mm -hmm. and we would go on these long nature walks into these meditative states you know of uh conversation yes. that we would get into and he didn't quite understand what was going on but he was just like wow what am i feeling right now and he would express that he was just like i don't know what's going on and i was like look at this tree do you see how it branches out this way and do you see how the roots go deeper in this way and so it's it's conversations like that yeah. and it comes in the simple it doesn't come with the aggressive yeah be spiritual and do this meditation and go to the sound bath and be <laughs> activated activate activate i'm like it's another you know dose of religion yeah that's the way I want I want life to speak into him you know what I mean and and whatever comes through I, I ask him about his dreams yeah you know I was like have you dreamt anything lately what's been going on you know yeah simple 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 gentle you know what I mean yeah oh my gosh I like, love that <laughs> I love that so he would you say then he's a seer as well yes and oh yeah for sure I'm excited to really see like how these gifts translate totally you know, within him yeah 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 is he has such an authority about him my son is a is an individual and i'm so so happy for it he he and i are very different in how we grew up obviously but he has this personality where he's not afraid to speak his mind mm -hmm. to his parents mm -hmm. to anyone mm -hmm. really he's mm -hmm. very just like this confidence the safety he feels in himself of just like I'm going to tell you when I don't like something and that's okay. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, yeah. I, I'm still achieving that. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I say this a lot too, to some of my clients is that sometimes like I feel this with my own parents too, is that the children sometimes end up to, it becomes just sort of like a equal give and take of teaching and receiving, I guess, between parent and child, you know, where the, and I've, I've seen this in some of my clients where they say like, my children are teaching me a lot. Like they, like a lot, they're, they're being brought into their understanding of the spiritual because of their children. Right. Yes. Um, which excites mm -hmm. me because for me, that's like, it's hope for the future. And like, you know, it's inspiring. I, Cause I think sometimes we look around at what's going on in the world and we're like, fuck like how are we going to get ourselves out of this but for me mm -hmm. like hearing these stories about the youth i'm like no 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 things are going to be great you know like things oh, are going to be yeah, great they already are yeah they already are you know what i mean i i've really been sitting with this and this might take us in a different direction that's but cool that's <laughs> cool but uh i've been sitting with this and i don't know about you christy but you know how collectively we get into these, uh, especially in spiritual spaces, right? We get into this idea of in next year, we're breaking through this year to get to next year and this next year and this next year. I've been hearing this since 2020 mm -hmm. and it reminded me of religion when it was always like the coming of Christ. Yes. <laughs> it was always like this idea and this fear tactic of like, and he's coming soon and he's coming soon. And so in spirituality, I've been hearing a similar narrative of like in the following year, the next year, it's going to be the year that we all collectively new earth is birth, you know? And I was sitting with the idea of that where, I was like, you know, we've been on a transitional shift collectively for quite some time as humans, mm -hmm. because I feel like the human heart and mind and just spirit, the human spirit has been on an evolutionary trajectory for quite some time. Mm -hmm. So if humanity is stepping into that space, everything else must follow. 
Yes. Not that it has to, but it must. Yes. It's just part of the order of existence, right? And so I don't feel that it's going to happen as soon as we feel it is because we're very stubborn mm -hmm. <laughs> in that space. Yeah. You know, so when it comes to these children, they are the way makers and way showers presently, next, in the future, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and it just continues to evolve in that way. Mm -hmm. You know, I find that for the next five years, we will continue to collectively purge. And I don't like putting definitives out like that, but it just feels that way. I feel the exact same. <laughs> no, because I literally haven't, I, there's at least that I know offhand, like three of my closest girlfriends that I've been saying, especially that five years, for some reason, yeah. I keep being shown this five year mark. And I think it's that it's also that it's like, just like a cleansing that needs to happen, you know, like, um, or that is happening. That is happening. That's it is. And, more, and like with this cleansing energy is us coming into us remembering and accessing our gifts and our abilities and that integration of the physical and the spiritual, right? Which like, yeah. yeah. So I definitely feel that that same kind of five year mark, but you're right within the spiritual community, especially there is a lot of this. And maybe that is too, because so many of us do, you know, um, look to the planets and stuff and the planets obviously do dictate stuff in a way. Um, but maybe, you know, it's too much of that. Like where that's where we're too, too out of this reality, you know, and, and looking too much ahead, ahead, ahead all the time instead of just that, like, yeah, tapping into what's that's the energy. That's the energy that I've been on, you know, and yeah. I've been, I've been as like, Speaking to my clients from that energetic standpoint of make it simple. Mm -hmm. It's simple. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you want to be in an era of this kind of transformational shift, then be the steward of your current existence. Mm -hmm. Be the caretaker of your current creation. You know, really be and invite that kind of intentionality, that form of mindfulness into your every day and make a love letter, create a love letter of your current reality of your life. You know, a lot of what is said, and I myself was one of those. And so there is zero judgment when I say mm -hmm. this, but I was one of those people, and I know many are, that would proclaim, this is my last life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. This is such an egoic expression. It was so of the self. I am done. <laughs> like I completed everything. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I would be one of these people, but I am actually pretty leery of people that express that these days because I don't want it to end. Mm -hmm. I'm such a lover of mm -hmm. life. I've become such a lover of life. Mm -hmm. Someone that was so gung ho to get the hell out of here. Mm -hmm. I was so like on a suicidal trip, just like, I got to get out. I got to get out. Uh, to now being someone that appreciates this life so deeply. I love it so much. I love the texture of it. I love the the people in it. I love the experience of it all, the heartbreak and everything included. Yeah. And man, it's been challenges nonstop sometimes. But man, I sit with all that and I'm just like, this reality is dope. Like <laughs> this reality, is like, what are we trying to escape from? Yes, like, you know? yes, yes. But <laughs> okay, so just to kind of, um, sorry, I got to reposition myself. I love sitting on the floor when I do everything, but then my legs get numb. Um, if, okay. So you're, you're, you're loving this life that you're in right now. And I don't, I don't know where you stand with this type of, you know, beliefs and stuff, but do you want to come back to earth or? I feel that it's almost inevitable. Yeah. I feel like it's almost inevitable. And and to be honest with you, I don't know if I'm really even thinking about it mm -hmm. as much as I used to. Mm -hmm. I think that I, <laughs> because I was still, I was discovering, I was in a season of discovery and I still am in a different way though. Yeah. You know, I was in a season of discovery of timelines with Lumeria and Egypt mm -hmm. and, you know, Atlantis mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Mesopotamia and mm -hmm. all these timelines that are in congruence with us, you know, and our soul tie to it. But, um, 
I, I, I feel like I was in a constant, what's going to come next, what's going to come next. I feel like I'm, I'm practicing deeper presence of the now and really pouring into the spaces, right? Because yeah. this world, we can witness it from so many different perspectives. I can either see a world that's on fire and see it as a bad thing. You know, mm -hmm. and I do, I sit with the heart of things that are currently occurring and, mm. and all of these just, it's, it's, it hurts, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, I'm choosing to actually witness this life in the same space, um, as a, the most incredible birth that we are navigating through mm -hmm. these atrocities. I'm, uh, it, it, it there's no words to express what I feel when it comes to it, but um, I'll be damned if all of this is happening in vain yeah. or it's being wasted. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So as far as like my next life or what's coming next, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it's almost inevitable that I would come back mm -hmm. um, because we're eternal. If, if we express, right, we're this eternal essence, we're this eternal energy and all of this stuff. Um, then think about all of the myriad of, you know, yes. like ways that that can happen yes. you know, in a, in a world that by the way, is constantly shifting this reality of what we're seeing was not always this way. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm looking mm -hmm. at my window right now. I'm like the trees that are outside my window at one point were seeds. Yes. And so if, if that can transform, if that can grow and be replaced over and over and over and over again for however long, and that the vine just <laughs> right <laughs> totally totally but i mean think about it yeah. i haven't i haven't there's no way that the soul you know i feel this this is the truth i feel like i'm living every reality right now yeah at the same time yes all at once yes you know yes no absolutely <laughs> and it's interesting because just the other day i was talking with a friend because um i was about to offer past life readings but uh, I have, you know, over the last couple of months, really been coming to an understanding of how important it is to understand the lineage of this life, right? Like to fully understand this, why we're here in this existence. If, if it is true that we did choose this avatar to house this spirit and this soul for this existence, I think that there's potentially more importance in in exploring this lineage than to understand why we chose this body, right? Why we chose this way of being. And like, I've been, I've been, I've been going back. Like I just uncovered a family tree from one of my aunts that dates back to the 1400s and learn. Wow. Yeah. And learning, this is on my mother's side and learning a little bit about like a great, 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 great grandfather from 300 years ago. And wow. reading his story, he was a very well known doctor and poet. And so, you know, exploring some of what I can online, and I'm like, Oh, my gosh, we have so many similarities, like there's so many connections here. And he's 300 years ago, right? So uh, to <laughs> me, there's more importance in, in understanding this existence versus the fascination and focusing on past lives. And, and I just think that that's very common in this, you know, um, in the wellness and, and well being industry, I guess you could say hey, calling it an industry, but you know, this community, right, and like understanding where we came from, but I think there's more about exploring that here in this physical, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah yeah absolutely i um i i've i've gone into spaces on my own and also assisted you know into spaces of remembrance almost organically mm -hmm, by the way mm -hmm. where where there might be a slight intention of just like maybe i'm i'm trying to sit with myself of like I want to deeper understand my current existence and why certain things are happening, whatever. And it sends me yes. to a space, yes. you know what I mean? A Absolutely. particular vibration of existence yep. where it's like, here, go here. Mm -hmm. And I'll enter in and through that, you know, and I just re I collect medicine from that space, yes. bring it into this here. Yeah. Now. Yes, yes, yes. 
I can see it dancing mm-hmm. together in that way mm-hmm. where it's like, why reinvent the wheel if I've done this already? Yes. And so with clients, when they, when they've journeyed that way with me, cause I, I, I don't necessarily offer it, but if it presents itself, I assess. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I do allow a lot of that kind of, however it integrates, let's integrate together, you know, kind of theory, but I, uh, that, that's what I love to tell my, my clients and anyone I journey with. I was like, look, I can come into this existence where maybe I don't feel as confident, but I can tap into a vibration of existence and be like, man, I was a leader of what? Yes. And I did, huh? Yes. I can bring that into the now. And I am this yes. like, oh, I can bring this into this space. But in obviously not allowing titles and labels. Mm-hmm. I am a galactic mm-hmm. federal agent of whatever. Uh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> there yes. might have been an existence of that. Sure. Yes. Why not? Yes. You know, but in this current mm-hmm. reality, mm-hmm. if we even want to call it that, I'm I'm Abigail yes. and I'm a mother of a beautiful boy yeah. and, and this and I'm that and all these other titles that we add on into our existence. <laughs> yeah. Well, you and I talked about this actually recently where we're like tapping into some past life stuff and integrating some of that. And you're, yeah. it's, uh, I do believe in, um, working with whatever spirit presents to you because just like you said you'll kind of go off somewhere and something's presented to you and I trust the nudges and the whispers of the universe and the nudges and whispers of spirit because it does lead us to a particular place and we talked about focusing more on those energies as assisting our soul like the themes of our soul versus well I I was I'm a Pleiadian and so blow all you know like integrating more of whatever that experience was into this into this life too it's all about the integration <laughs> like it's all about the merging of things right that's it yeah yeah, yeah. i mean honestly we need we we should yes. invite more play into this reality yes. that we're in yeah too often in spirituality i find that we get into this space of and i again it's not a judgment because nope. man i journey through same, it too same, yeah you know yeah, no, we're literally, <laughs> that. we're speaking from personal experience of things. That's it. I'm, I'm, if I'm judging any, if, if it's being received as judgment, it's because I've judged myself of course, first. Of Trust. course. Trust. Yeah. Trust, okay? yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I see it now from a different perspective because I'm on a different space, right? Yes. Where it's like, I got to be so sacred and I got to be so, and man, and I got, I can't, you know, I shouldn't. And da, 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 there's there's so much of that. Mm-hmm. And and I'm like, you know, the thing about being human is that we should be a little messy. The thing about human is that we should, you know, invite laughter, that we should be, you know, expressive yes. about who we are yes. and, and 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 be our most human self. I'm like, I don't think that there is a greater mission, purpose. Mm-hmm calling Mm -hmm. in this life than that than for you to acquire that form of authenticity yeah and i think i shared this with you right you might have come across it in your own way yeah but the vibration of that is truly of the highest in this current existence that we're in Mm -hmm. being your authentic self it trumps love Mm -hmm. by so much Mm -hmm. because how do we know how to love unless we know how to be authentically true to our soul self yeah you know yeah no it can't yeah you'll reach a, a capacity there you'll you'll reach a ceiling so okay so you must find this then a lot too when clients ask how do I find my soul's purpose or my soul's mission and stuff so then what is what is your advice for questions like that I always say something that that pisses people off either that or <laughs> <laughs> It either makes them really upset or or they don't want to work with me or but the ones that do, you know, then I'm just like, we're, yes. we're there. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, that's OK. Yeah. But um, I always tell them you're already in it. Mm-hmm. You're already in it. You want to know what your purpose is? Wake up in the morning and and speak kindness into your home and into your body and into your neighbor and into nature. Um, you want to truly understand your purpose. Um, look at what's happening around you. Yes. And then amplify the space of where you currently are work with what you have work with where you are and that what what we deem as like the purpose or the mission or the calling naturally births from within Mm -hmm. there's there's just no way right we were kind of talking about it earlier in this conversation when humanity decides i am going in a particular direction 
everything else must follow. It's the order mm -hmm. of it all. Mm -hmm. The same happens within us. The moment that I can walk into this life with um, gratitude in my heart, when I can walk into this life and speak words of intentional, um, you know, awareness and spaces, you know, where I am here, um, just speaking truth into reality. Mm -hmm. And I am actually listening to people in conversation and lending that energy, then I'm in purpose. Yeah. Then I'm in purpose and it's felt and it's inviting and it's warm and it's different. And, and then people begin to ask, well, what is that? Where can I bottle that up and, and take some? Because I, I would love a shot of that. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's something that's so rare these days mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. we're in a competition to get somewhere and we don't even know where that place is yes Oof. yes absolutely oh i love this <laughs> <laughs> i love this so much because it's it's just it's i love hearing to like branch off because my i'm always saying to your purpose is to be right I, but it's also, I think, what the part of the difficulty of, of us fully realizing that, too, is the structures that the society that surrounds us that prevents us from actually understanding that and and um, sort of pushing us into the divine masculine energy. So this is going to segue us into stepping into <laughs> our divine femme energy, because I know you speak a lot about this. I speak a lot about this. <clears throat> it's so essential to tap into when especially tapping into spirit in mediumship mm -hmm. work in psychic work in healing energy as well um the ways of the witch and stuff like this so um mm -hmm. what then would be sort of i'm curious just first as to like what your observations are between the perhaps imbalance between the masculine and feminine and how we can call that more into balance, how to kind of access what even is divine feminine energy. Maybe we can start there because I feel like my mind's going like this <laughs> as we get into this part of one another. <laughs> right? So what to you, what is, um, what does divine feminine energy mean? Yeah. First and foremost, I find that all of existence navigates under a frequency of divinity and we have created a form of segmentation around that uh, to create logical spaces out of it. Yes. Because I, I had to begin to ask myself, Christy, the following. What defines divinity, period? Mm -hmm. And who is the judge and jury, like, claiming that mm -hmm. segmented line? Yep. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely, yeah. Same, same with sacredness, same with anything. It just is, right? So feminine energy embodied feminine energy which i think is actually the expression that people are trying to find mm -hmm. you know <clears throat> how do you embody a true feminine energy you got to think about nature right i love inviting nature into everything same 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 <laughs> <laughs> when you witness nature right what are the feminine elements yes what are the feminine elements mm -hmm. you know the feminine elements are coming into spaces of stillness mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so you're looking at the earthly element the earthly element navigates most of its growth in the depth yes quiet which it's it's in its own yes. temple yes. of self right, right? Mm -hmm. when you're looking at water in the depth of the ocean there's a lot of stillness there there's a lot of quiet there there's a lot of just we're just here mm -hmm. we're here mm -hmm. we're here mm -hmm. right. right and and that doesn't mean that the feminism isn't doing anything yes so we're just yes. lounging around <laughs> yes Feed me. As much as I would love <laughs> to be doing that all the time. Yes. Listen, it's a vibe. Right, it's a vibe. Right. Okay. <laughs> but the feminine is actually doing so much work. Yes. So much work mm -hmm. in that. And that supposed stillness and that supposed, you know, quiet and contemplation and all this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. That's where spirituality kind of goes. Yes. All right, here we go. Um, there's birthing and death happening nonstop in that space mm -hmm. because it can't. Mm -hmm. because it's allowed because there is a nurturing about it it's being held through its transitional points yeah that's where the masculine really steps in the masculine epigenetic right we're talking about air and we're talking about fire it is an igniter it's also a motivator it but it's not doing so wildly because then what do you get you get freaking tornadoes and you get you know raging fires and it's destroying everything no true embodied masculine energy comes in and says 
I'm taking direction from you. Where are we heading? What are you birthing? What are you creating? So that I know where I'm heading to. Mm -hmm. I understand it. So within our own selves, right? Because we're both within our own selves, the feminine says, stay with me for a while. And the season that feels the most uncomfortable and the season where you can't fully see what is happening in and around you, but sit with me here, take a moment, take a pause and speak with me. Listen, just listen. And I promise you the medicine is going to be found here. And then our masculine self says, Oh my gosh, I, it came in, you know, I know where I'm going and now, Oh my God, I have this creative idea. And how about I pull this person in and how about I, I, I it's such a dance. Oh, it's such a beautiful dance. You're cooking together. I have this ingredient. No, I have this one. Yes. Okay, I'm going to put it here and I'm going to wait. And now I'm going to go. And yeah. that's mindfulness. Yeah. That's intentionality. Mm -hmm. You're birthing that within yourself. And then it's it's going to be represented in everything that you do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, beautifully said. <laughs> such a way with words. Like I just like <laughs> sitting <laughs> <laughs> being hypnotized. So how how would you say then that you that if 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 anyone wants to ask like okay well how do I access that energy right like how how do I embody the divine feminine energy what would be your advice yeah. to do I you know I would say because oftentimes it's the feminine energy is misconstrued you know it's not seen through a proper lens mm -hmm. there's so much expectation of what that should look like and be like yeah um, I would say that the very first thing is number one come into a space where it's just you mm -hmm. release and cut the noise mm -hmm. there's so much noise mm -hmm. in this reality so much noise yes. uh, think about a woman who's giving birth Think about a woman who's giving birth and i'm not talking about a hospital birth where it's chaotic mm -hmm. and there's all this stuff going on the way we've seen it on television i'm talking about the natural essence of birth mm -hmm. when a woman i remember this this moment i was coming into a space where i was birthing my son i didn't want anyone around me mm -hmm. i needed to be on my own because i needed to come into a space where i understood what my body was doing i had to listen and and so much noise was distracting mm -hmm. so i would say the very first thing if you want to access your truest femininity come into a space where it's just you yeah and understand what that voice sounds like. And don't be afraid to listen. Don't be afraid to, to tap into it. Journal, yeah. get into nature and listen to nature. Listen and observe and witness the trees, the birds, the wind, the, like everything. Yeah. You're surrounded by a library of information literally outside your window, mm -hmm. you know? And so if you're able to do that, let your heart begin to speak to you and to awaken something within you, then invite people that you trust, people that are aligned to that similar vibration, mm -hmm. you know, and vibration is just, it's just a, a synergy of soul speaking to soul where you don't have to overly explain it. Yes. It's happening here. Yeah, you can see 100%. it. 100%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's felt. Yes. It's not forced, yes. you know? Yes. And so in that space, you know, you take your time mm -hmm. and you don't force because that's the thing. And I think I've expressed this a few times. I cannot go to nature and tell it, hey, hurry up, get to summer already. Right. <laughs> Imagine. Hot chop. Winter sucks. Hurry up. Yeah. You know, nature will look at me and just ignore me, number one, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. then probably secretly laugh. Yeah. You know, yes. be like, yes. what, an idiot. <clears throat> what an idiot. It's taking its time. It needs to form its roots. You know, mm -hmm. in winter, we fortify our roots so that in spring we can produce something from a grounded foundational space. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. so, so take your time. I would say that's probably the very initial. Mm -hmm. That was very long winded. No, but, it's know. beautiful. Again, I'm just <laughs> keep speaking. I'm just like keep speaking. <laughs> so how so how can one tell when they are imbalanced with the masculine and feminine energy? Yeah, when would when would you question. say that we that we need to maybe call on more of the divine mm -hmm. feminine? Yeah, I would say that when you begin to feel that, that, like, I'm just always on the go, mm -hmm. where I am just everything is a checklist, and everything is a goal, and everything is like, I, I, and then and it becomes forced, yes. you begin to feel it, you yeah. can't, you can't lie to yourself. I mean, you could, but not for long, no. you know, you get into that space where it's just a constant, and then it, it's starting the burnout is starting to birth inside of you. Yep. <laughs> and you get too much in your mind where it's a constant just the thing about the feminine is that the feminine invites you back into the heart and that's that's what's to be revered and what's what we are collectively mm -hmm. not just men you know that segmentation drives me insane Same. Um, <laughs> Same. collectively collectively we're being called back to nurture the feminine essence what they call the mother mm -hmm. essence 
of nature, of naturaleza, right? And so you're entering into that space of self where if 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 this is activated too much, if this is just so, mm, 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 and you're against a wall constantly, then you know that the, the dance needs to shift a little more this way. And it is, it's just a dance. Yes. Coming to that form of like, and you're not always gonna be this, <laughs> that's not that's not realistic no. and that's not human you'll always have a little more of each yeah. you know yeah. but just keep it in a space that feels comfortable for you and only you're gonna know that marker mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay beautiful i love that and okay so yesterday actually your one of your tiktoks was on the gift of vulnerability um because mm-hmm. i wanted because that is a lot of that f- kind of um feminine essence as well right so I'd like to talk a little bit about that and because you spoke so beautifully so powerfully about like speaking from your heart like expressing your your truth and 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 putting it all out there um Mm -hmm. so I would love to tap into that a little bit like pull more out of that topic a little bit because I was I I re-watched that video multiple times because it was just so true and I think so needed Right now, too, I think so many of us are so afraid to be vulnerable. The amount of times that I hear people, even in session, they're like, I'm going to cry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to cry. You know, I'm like, why are you apologizing for expressing yourself, for showing emotion? Right. So I would love to dive into that a little bit more if if you have 100%. more insight on that. Yeah, for sure. I love TikTok, by the way. Me like, too. Like, I, I feel like I put this stuff out there. <laughs> I went from absolutely hating it. It's changed a lot, though. Like, I hate. Like, I was like, I don't want to be on this. What the what? But yeah. it's more. I used to make fun of it because I was like, "What is this?" Same. <laughs> now I'm like, I'm all about it. There's so it's so it's coming to the space now where it's uh, I find a lot more educational. I learned so much on there. I connect so much more with with people and. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I I love it. It's lovely. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, when it comes to that space, you know, and I've I've encountered this within myself and also with clients and friends, you know, when we cry, uh, some of us, our immediate response is to apologize for that emotion. And we got to, when we step into that, we got to think about where vulnerability was first killed Mm -hmm. or where it was altered. I just got chills. Yeah. (laughs) Think about it. It might have happened to you more than likely. I know it happened to me. <clears throat> Go figure. <laughs> I know that happened to me. Oh my god, it happened twice. <clears throat> when I was when I was really young, if I would cry, the initial reaction of my caretakers was, "Hey, enough. Mm-hmm. Cut it out. Mm-hmm. Stop it. Mm-hmm. Stop. I'm gonna give you something to cry about." <gasps> oh my gosh, my dad used to say that too. I'll give you something to cry about. Ooh. Fear. Yeah. So now my sadness was in conjunction and in correlation with fear. Mm-hmm. It was a mixture mm-hmm. that was cemented in my coding of memory of subconscious thought. So my patterning moving forward from that, if I don't resolve that within self, is I have to apologize because I'm not being a good girl. Right. I am not acting accordingly to what my adult caretakers are saying I should be. When my son cries now, this is where the pattern stops, right? Mm -hmm. When my son cries now and expresses vulnerability, I invite it further. Mm -hmm. Yes, Yes, be angry right now. Yes, yes. Yes, be sad and be loud about it and get it out. Don't don't hold it in. Don't don't pocket that and, Mm -hmm. and stay with it. I find in the existence that we are in, for some of us that are of this similar age range, right? And it's not limited to that. You know, anybody can navigate through this, but currently where we are uh vulnerability is a lost art yeah it's a lost art because we are still navigating trauma patterns of the past so several things happen either we suppress and we don't say anything so we stay in the space of i'm going to deal with this on my own and i got this and i'll figure it out and the lone wolf energy comes out right that template mm-hmm. uh, which drives me insane mm-hmm. comes out i navigate through it myself that's why Uh, Or, you know, we get into spaces where we're so out with our emotion and we feel terrible that we are imposing any of this on anyone. Yes. Right. And so we have those kind of that's just a couple of examples. Mm -hmm. But um, we then wonder why this experience, the way that it presents itself to us is coming from a limitation versus the fluidity of expression. Mm -hmm. So So we want so desperately for things to be mirrored back to us right and so the example that i used in that TikTok was in a romantic connection you know you say 
that you want an individual to express themselves fully and to show up in a particular kind of way, but we have a really difficult time looking in the mirror and being like, where am I actually doing that for myself? And maybe it's not this individual. The the individual's just a uh, you know, mm-hmm. they they're interchangeable. It could be it could be whatever. Mm-hmm. But it's like I I I often find within myself I I have tried to pull vulnerable spaces out of existence without fully understanding the vulnerable spaces of me within mm-hmm. self. You know? Mm-hmm. And so if I if this is a mirrored creation, if this is my creation, then what is happening here? How can I invite deeper vulnerable spaces of authenticity and authentic expression and truth and love and rawness and that so that I can reflect back? Yeah. I give, I receive. And what I receive, I give. You know, it's a dance of that way too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oof. My goodness. <laughs> like, <laughs> I- are you falling in love with me? Stop it. <laughs> I've already been there with you. So <laughs> I swear I'm going to be like re-listening to this episode. I'm being like, cause I, especially when I have to edit it and I, I, I'm, I'm actually very excited. Like I'm, when I know the conversation's like real good, I'm like, oh, this is going to be so much fun to edit because I'm going to keep, you know, like <laughs> receiving the information. Yeah. And getting different perspectives on it too. So I hope everyone else gets that same kind of uh, feeling and vibe from from your expression because I just think it's so beautiful and just so um, centered and channeled like it just really is coming from divine source and I love that so much so in tapping into that some of that energy I would love to pull um, an oracle card because you do offer offer oracle readings yes as well as yeah. energy healing reiki healing yeah so it's I labels right I know Shambhala. Okay. Shambhala energy healing, which is, uh, you know, Tibetan in its roots, and it's uh, connecting to an aspect of a mystical space of inner earth. And okay. that, that's just how I was initiated into that mm-hmm. space, you know. Mm-hmm. So what can someone expect from that kind of session? Yeah. So, you know, Reiki, which I, I think Reiki is beautiful. It's such an incredible expression of, of soul being expressed out. Um, it, it is under kind of a masculine space because it's like um, the sigils and the way and the, the, the methodology behind it is extremely masculine. Mm-hmm. Um, Shambhala, what I have found is incredibly feminine. Yes. And that's why I think they both work really well together. Mm-hmm. Shambhala isn't really in a construct of, I have to create a sort of pattern in order for you to receive your healing. Shambhala is says i know that you and i are one and therefore it does like it's obvious that the healing is going to to um uh, be translated no matter how distant we are no matter what patterns i use no matter what mm-hmm. it's like it just is mm-hmm. you know so that's kind of what um, but you that. also use the power of your voice as well because i've heard you saying yeah. also um and i just think that's such a be- another beautiful modality for healing so and we've we spoke a little bit about like the power of the voice and and that kind of um siren energy in a positive aspect not your traditional <laughs> man eating sirens <laughs> maybe in another life but um cuz you do work with the voice too in I do. in session also yeah um it depends in-person sessions i uh that's where i offer it the most Mm -hmm. if if there is you know a a call to do it virtually i'll do it but what i found is that the virtual space with what i do it's tough to translate yeah and i'm working on translating it better you know what i mean but my person sessions and group gatherings and things like that um i do offer a space of cellular healing Mm -hmm. through frequency vibration so as i'm singing i'm tuning into maybe the heart chakra frequency maybe the womb Mm -hmm. you know frequency the third eye the crown you know Mm -hmm. soul star earth star whatever Mm -hmm. you know what i mean the intentionality of it and so the results some people are just like you like i there was something that shifted i don't know what it was i can't quite comprehend but my body felt it Mm -hmm. and and the first time i ever did that was for the ambassador of argentina that was my first actual session was with what ambassador of argentina out in like santa monica area oh my gosh and it was such a what? That's a long story. I'm not gonna go into. <laughs> okay, that. well, you and I are gonna talk about that after another day or whatever. Because I'm like, 
what? That's crazy. <laughs> It was. I forgot about that until literally right now. <laughs> that happened in 2020. And a friend put me on the spot and she goes, you should listen to her. She's amazing. And I was like, oh, I'm shit. just discovering that what's happening. <laughs> is it light language the- that you sing? Is, it li- is that what you would say? So it depends. You know, there's light language that can come out of song, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And they express it. It's so funny because it's so active right now as we're talking about it. <clears throat> but, um, <clears throat> oh my yeah. gosh. It's like this light language that comes out, you know, and that kind of transmission. It might do light language is just a soul a, in its most human attempt mm-hmm. trying to express mm-hmm. something that the soul can understand in a human way. Mm-hmm. Right? Most beautifully expressed. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But uh, I really tap into frequency. So sometimes the sound, you know, I don't even know if I can really attempt it right now, but it's sort of like a, let me see, let me see I could ground into it. I didn't expect to do this, did it? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? So it's it's almost like this space, you know, first tapping into the heart, mm-hmm. tapping into this will be directed at Christy for mm-hmm. those that are listening, right? Uh, tapping into that space, you know, if, with a willing participant. Coming in a space where frequency is speaking to frequency and it is saying, I am here. Yeah. And this whole existence was birth and sound, right? That's where that whole theorem of like Big Bang, it's like, yeah, it's a spoken word. Yeah. So it was vibration, birthed it. You know what I mean? We all have that. <sighs> that made me, my body was <laughs> pulsating. Like I was like, Whoa. <laughs> like really received. That was beautiful. Thank you, because I I know I I don't like being put on the spot, so I hope I didn't make you feel uncomfortable. But that was beautiful. That was beautiful. Wow. Oh my gosh. Okay. So and then you also offer soul coaching as well, like a spiritual mentorship. It sounds like a menu at like the cheesecake factory. I know. (laughs) But I'm a. If we follow you, we're multi-dimensional beings. We have access to all these gifts, and like we should be like, I'm all about. I'm like, I'm a Leo, so I'm gonna hype everybody up, right? Like, tell me what you can do, and let's spread this shit around. So, like, I think it's especially (laughs) because so many people, I think, right now are looking for guidance and looking for safe space. Even it's not even about being told what to do, but being guided and how to pull out what you have within and and just express like what are your blocks and what do you you know so you also offer the coaching and as well as the energy healing yeah 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 i do and it it, it's integrative right because i also have my certification um in trauma-informed therapy um hypnotherapy i have several like certifications Mm -hmm. and actual uh cognitive therapy practices that merge with the spiritual awareness and activation and all that stuff and that's that's honestly like i said from the beginning the basis of my work yeah um i wanted to be sure that i had the logical backing Mm -hmm. for this human existence Mm -hmm. as much as the divine you know cosmic space merging into one working together mm-hmm. you know beautiful okay so let's channel into some of your oracle i'm gonna pull from um the healing spirits okay. oracle deck uh <laughs> gordon smith artwork by naomi walker so um maybe i'll just get you to tell me when to stop I mean, that's what i will do right there okay Ooh, this is nice it says True mm-hmm. love can never really be lost. I agree, by the way. <laughs> so so what comes what comes to you right right now when you feel that true love can never really be lost? Can I see that image? Mm-hmm. I was just looking at it. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Wow. That's that's phenomenal. I need a photo of that. I love that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I like closing my eyes, mm-hmm, you know. Please. If you can tell in this conversation, mm-hmm. I tend to do that. So I was too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like I, I want to create deeper, mm-hmm. like, uh, at least certain sensory spaces. But um, the essence of love is a vibration that is a continuum 
and the logical space of humanity loves to segment love uh, because of the way that we have created aspects of this reality through a falsehood of what true pure love is right and so love amongst many vibrations um simply exist and so coming back into the essence into the heart of expressive love what we deem divine unconditional etc it can't ever be broken i i feel like through that card right i love that that's the one that came out um it's encompassing a lot of what we spoke about in this conversation already but i feel that as just a collective as a whole we have been journeying through spaces of coming back into the simplicity and the simplicity of love and the power that there is in the simplicity of love and 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 releasing all of these spaces that we have just attached to what we feel love should be and love isn't a lot of what we think it is mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. what i feel people think breaks love in connection within ourselves and existence etc is because we're not witnessing love through the lens of what it actually is so we attach uh attachment you know to love expectation to love fear to love um judgment to love none of that is actually love you know so in seeing that card it just feels like it's like a, a call to the remembrance of purity of what we are made of what we've always been you know yes beautiful <laughs> i was like that was beautiful. No, it was beautiful. And it really does match this image. It's very like a very cosmic, ethereal image. All these different kind of versions of different bodies kind of swirling around this kind of grounded, you know, kind of middle kind of um, source of, of these two entities or beings. And then all this other kind of energy swirling around. I'm just trying to describe the card for those that are just listening um, and not yeah. seeing our, our faces on camera. <laughs> um, but that was so beautiful. And I, and I completely agree to all of that. I receive it all. And I just, it's, it's our, love. it's love is, is just who we are. It's just our base essence and our base existence. So it, it can never yeah. be lost. That's, that's that who we card are. I feel is like, I love that we pulled that card because I feel that that card was not only meant for the, the people who are listening or watching this, but it was also a card that was very, very attuned to your energy and where you're at currently, Christy. Right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I, I can't fully see the image of it, but if there are two beings in that space or, or, or center, energies, right, yeah. creating that kind of cosmic source of purity and all mm -hmm, of that, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, it's the spaces of collaborative love that you are formulating through you know this podcast uh through other efforts that you're journeying in and through you know and and may the center point of all creation come back to love yes and everything that you create and everything that is going to be expressed out that that's a magnetic a magnetism force you know what i mean because people come into a space that that it's itching something that they didn't even realize they forgot yeah they're like oh how Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. that's, that's the greatest awakening. Gorgeous. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love you so much. Let everybody know where they can find you. I'm going to leave all your links and everything in the show notes. But just for those that are listening, where can everyone yeah. get in touch with you? Yes. So I am on the social media everywhere. I <laughs> feel like I put content all over the place. Yeah. I am in Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Threads. X, I think is what it's called now because of Twitter. Um, and you can find me under energy light healing. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for sharing the space with me and connecting with me. It was just so beautiful. Oh, and you also have too your new program that you're launching in the new year. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> see, we just get carried away. Uh, January 111, this, your new, your, this is a brand new program. Yeah. It's the first time it's being even spoken about. Ooh. You know what I mean? Well, by the time this comes out, yeah. probably not. But <laughs> but currently, we're, we're, when we're recording this, yeah, it's the first time we're fully speaking this out into existence. So I'm excited. Yes. But 
it's a program called from ethereal to eternal like uh, earthly and and the the concept behind that is what we were talking about here you know if if you are someone you know that is in a space that you ventured in through this spiritual awareness and this healing journey and all this stuff and you're just getting convoluted with all the messaging and all the you know there's this coach and that stuff and this session and this and that and that bringing it back into a whole union of self you know where you can bring it into practical spaces you know it doesn't have to be so cosmic in order for it to actually make sense in this reality and so it's going to be a four-week course and we're going to be journeying weekly uh through zoom and uh each session will be recorded and you know it's it's going to be incredibly uh activating in a very earthly human way yeah oh, it sounds, <laughs> so this sounds phenomenal i can't wait to like follow along and just yeah like promote because i just think whatever you offer is beautiful medicine and so needed to the collective so just i'm so grateful for our connection and that it just keeps building and getting better and sweeter as we you know keep going so yeah thank you <laughs> thank you so much abigail this was such a nice nice chat thank you Oh, thank you, Christy. This was an honor. What a way to start my day, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. I'm like, I'm ready to go. <laughs> my friend, you are a real one for making it this far. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Connected in the Den. Seriously, from the depths of my being, I appreciate you being a part of this community and sharing your time with us. We have got some incredible guests entering the den in the upcoming episodes. We're going to be talking ancestral liberation, the ways of the witch, conscious spending, financial freedom, music as a medicine for mental health and spiritual development, and just so much more. And it would be a freaking blessing to connect with you on my other social media platforms. So you can follow me, The Wandering Lioness, on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube for behind the scenes content, updates, events, and sneak peeks into upcoming episodes. If today's episode brought you the feels, please take a moment to share it with your friends and family. And don't forget to rate and review the show on your favorite podcast platforms. Your feedback is invaluable and helps me to get to know you better to improve the show and to bring you more of what you vibe with. Your support seriously means the world to me and it helps the show to reach even more amazing listeners like yourself. My friend, be curious, be inspired, and be blessed. I'm Christiane. This is Connected in the Den.